All right, well, we're um, almost through our first day at Macna. It seems like everybody's uh, having a good time. Lots of like, cool corals, exotic livestock, some great presentations coming up. Um, it's a, a real pleasure to have um, a pioneer in marine aquatics with us today. Uh, when I started reefing as a young kid in the mid-90s, uh, I'll never forget one of the first techniques that really kind of caught my eye was the, the Jobert plenum method. And Dr. Jobert, he's standing uh, you know, he, he's contributed so much to the field of uh, marine aquariums and the marine aquarium knowledge. Um, he's got a lot to offer and I'm just really glad that he's here. So thank you. Thank, help me in welcoming uh, Dr. Jean Jobert. Hello everyone. So uh, I apologize in advance is if I'm not always very clear, but uh, the problem is that I arrived in the middle of the night. I could not sleep before two o'clock in the morning. Uh, my nose is leaking like a fountain because it was freezing cold in the aircraft. Um, anyway, but that's that's the situation. Um, so I'm going to, to deal with the, this, uh, this aquarium that's a captive reef. Uh, <coughs> captive reef uh, patch, that's, that's the word I was trying to find. I set up 25 ago in Monaco. This is uh, how the captive reef was looking like when I set it up in 1989. The, the tank is quite large. It's 40,000 liters. It's artificial light, completely artificial. 10 bulbs, 1,000 watts each. Metal halide, 6,500K. Photo period 1212. 12. At the beginning, it, it has been working in completely closed circuit. Then, after one accident that happened, because the um, po the uh, compensation with fresh water for evaporation was manual, and one of the technicians forgot to close the tap, and uh, the the fresh water had, was leaking all the night. Fortunately, uh, I came early in the morning. I stopped the system. Several corals were dead. Uh, the water was like milk. And fortunately, we, we had the possibility to add a lot of uh, seawater so that we can save most of the coral. But then we kept it in semi closed system, semi open, I would say semi open, which means that uh, the rate of renewal of seawater was 5% a day, which is not uh, too significant, but not uh, very important. I collected the live sand, the live rocks, the coral fish in Djibouti. Why in Djibouti? Because it is, it was uh, at that time, uh, there was a direct uh, connection between Djibouti and Nice with no stop, no transfer. <coughs> so, and also the, the flight was quite short and I could um, uh, manage to, to put the, the, the cores in, in, in the aircraft and, and have someone uh, taking uh, them in the airport in Nice only 12 hours later. And in, this, in these conditions, I, I could ship the coral without water, just in uh, packed and uh, humid conditions. And of course, it was saving a lot of weight and a lot of uh, cutting the cost very much. This is the, uh, the coral patch today. And I think this is uh, maybe a world record because they, all the coral that I collected as uh, small colonies, you know, built a real reef 25 years later. 
So I have a, a better uh, evaluation of the size of the tank because the visitors are looking at it. Another view from the side. And the dominant species, you know, after, uh, of course, after years, after years, you know, the uh, some corals became dominant. The Echinopora gemacea, you know, the, um, the colony, you, you can see uh, on, on the first uh, ground, you know, on the lower side of the aquarium, is probably weighing more than 100 kilo. And it was not weighing more than one kilo when I, I brought it 25 years ago. The, the other uh, large colonies are Turbinaria reniformis. And this Turbinaria, this turbinaria uh, came from uh, pruning of a colony I collected in 1997, 35 years ago, in the Red Sea. And also, Cellophora pistillata that are growing very quickly. And uh, I, I'm not going to elaborate very much. Uh, th there are fish, uh, typical from the Red Sea. We don't see all of them. We can see one, uh, Acanturus sohal, but there are also um, Pomacanthus asphur, uh, zebra Zebrazoma xanthurum, and so on. The system, you know, as you can see on the guide of the Oceanographic Museum, is the, what I, I initially called the micro-ocean system, and that is more uh, often known as Jobert NNR for nitrate, natural nitrate reduction. This uh, process or system use biogeochemical bio processes similar to those which in nature take place in reef rocks and sediments and interact to achieve the homeostatic equilibrium of the ecosystem by maintaining the oligotrophic, the oligotrophic is a scientific name, it means nutrient poor conditions that coral reefs need to thrive. So the bi basic e idea consists in keeping in marine animal together with live sand, live rocks, and algae in well-illuminated tanks. And in fact, the CDI is, is, is more than 170 years old. The first pioneers were Mr. Ward, Dr. Johnson, so 1842, Mrs. Thin, I don't know what, or Thine, I don't know how to pronounce the name, uh, Mr. Goss, 80, 54, and 55, and Mr. Alfred Lloyd, 1856. I could find uh, drawings of their tanks. Uh, on the left side, a bowl. And on the right side, a glass jar, balanced, portable, that Alfred Lloyd was selling in his shop. And you can see that all of the uh, components that are needed to balance one aquarium are visible in, in this glass jar, algae, live rocks, deep sand bed, scavengers. And it's unbelievable. I, I didn't know that uh, till a few years. And, uh, then, and this man was selling uh, uh, pay and carry tanks in his shop in London. This is the publicity for his shop in, uh, in one English newspaper published in 1856. And I, I, I extracted one, one, one sentence from his, uh, this uh, journal publicity. The discovery of a mode of readily making artificial seawater 
gives large facilities, thus the permanent maintenance of a collection of living marine animals and algae in a state of domestication is rendered a far more easily attainable matter than, ever, even, than even the cultivation of flowers. To render this yet more practicable in the hands of inexperienced person, Mr. Lloyd makes it a point to keep in stock a number of small portable aquaria ready stocked and with the balance properly adjusted. Also, it is interesting to, to read the, this, uh, these books uh, written by uh, Philippe Henri Goss. One of them is, is uh, Aquarium Handbook. And also, I extracted a few sentences. Page two, the rocks, the crannies, the pools are studded with various seaweeds, and these, under the daily stimulus of sunlight, produce a vast quantity of oxygen, which, by the action of the waves and currents, is diffused through all parts of the habitable sea and maintains the health of its countless swarms of animals. In aquarium, we seek to imitate the chemistry of nature. It's exactly what I try to do. And that when I, I, I started to, to imitate nature, I, I knew nothing about these publications. The free access of light to the plants is indispensable, and therefore, that situation is best where the sun's rays fall most freely on their leaves. It is beautiful to see the thousands of tiny globules forming oxygen bubbles forming on every plant and even all over the stones. These globule, globules of pure oxygen, eliminated by the vegetation under the stimulus of light, are the vivifying principle of animal life. So in the middle of the 50s, Li Xin Eng in Indonesia, uh, René Couton, and myself in France, and I presume a likely unknown hobbies in all their countries, believed they had invented the ecological purification of marine aquariums. In, in fact, they were not just not aware of the work of the above mentioned pioneers. So I explained how I, I, I started the, uh, when I, uh, how I became an uh, aquarium hobbyist. Uh, I got my first freshwater aquarium in 1948. At that time, of course, uh, sorry, this aquarium was uh, very simple you know, and uh, ecology, ecologically balanced because just at that time we couldn't find the, the plastic was not existing. Uh, we couldn't find the uh, water pumps and uh, all of the things. So we just uh, balanced the, the aquarium by putting uh, humus, quartz sand, plants, and just a small uh, membrane pump that were blowing air. We were thinking at that time that uh, we were ox oxygenating the tank by blowing air. In fact, the oxygen is produced by plants, <laughs> not by the bubbles. You know, and if you bubble uh, air in, uh, during the day when the um, uh, water is super satur saturated with oxygen because of photosynthesis, of course, you decrease the oxygen content and not increase it. This is something that many people don't uh, understand. So at that time, I, uh, I, I read my f the, the first book of uh, Jack Cousteau. It was published in uh, 1945. Uh, 18 meters below the sea surface, and I started to become a snorkeler. <laughs> I was, I don't know, maybe 12 years old, something like that. And immediately, when I saw the uh, fantastic mar mar marine line that I could find under the in, in the in the clear waters of the Mediterranean Sea, so I I, I had the, uh, the uh, the project of uh, setting up a seawater tank. And this is what I did. And I did exactly the same thing that I was, uh, I, I used to do with uh, a freshwater aquarium. I put live sand, I put live stones, I collected in, in, in the med, 
colère par prolifera with and it, it was working quite well and um, by, by chance and I, I, I used uh, glass tanks molded uh, that, that were molded battery containers you know so there was no metal nothing that could uh, uh, rust and uh, produce toxic substance for the marine life. This is one probably one of the, uh, the reason why people that were trying at that time uh, trying to set up marine aquariums f f were failing because they were using uh, uh, metal uh, angles, you know, and uh, there were uh, there were there was zinc, you know, that were produces uh, deadful poisons with. Uh, with seawater. This is one uh, old picture, you know, of a Mediterranean cardinal fish and the Colerpa prolifera. Another picture of the uh, of these tanks. 1958. And I, I sent. At that time, uh, photos of the cardinal fish, which was not uh, fish, was not very common at that time, to the uh, research center of Castiglione, fisheries center, and started to exchange letter with his director. So I, I could find this letter. Uh, this is the the titled uh, paper, and the the the, the director told me, uh, you have a marine aquarium where you shot photos of the cardinal fish. Uh, did you set, that, set it up, um, this tank in uh, Oran? This is the city I was living in Algeria at that time. And he asked a few things about, uh, do you aerate it and so on, or do, do you renew the water? So the, uh, one year after, during uh, vacations in, in France, during holidays, I, I met by, by chance uh, René Couton. Uh, this man had a small shop in the city of Saint, in France. And he was the first man that I, I, I met that was manufacturing uh, tanks for seawater. At that time, it was impossible to find this kind of tank in the... And this tank, uh, we have to remember that at that time the plastic was not existing. He, he was making a, a kind of uh, frame, you know, with the, uh, fiberglass reinfor reinforced concrete. And the, 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 this uh, aquarium was, was uh, fit with the internal feeder containing glass, glass wool and activated charcoal. It was in, it is in, interesting to see that uh, René Coutin was uh, editing a first uh, s a small handbook, and somewhere in the handbook we can find this sentence. A big uh, point that uh, is uh, is that the, the the filter is not in the insp is not necessary in uh, marine aquarium. So then I, I moved from Algeria to France. I became a scuba diver. Uh, I got my Master of Science in 1964 from the University of Marseille. And um, in 1970, 1967, I became a lecturer. And Unfortunately, I, I, in, uh, instead of uh, keeping the same method I, I used to, to, to implement before, I started to use under gravel filter. And, uh, and this is the reason why my, my aquarium didn't function well during 10 years. So in, in, in 1970, uh, I was investigating coral reef in the south of Madagascar. And I brought back a few samples, coral samples, in, in my lab in Nice, this is Galactea fascicularis, 1970. 
In 1973, Jacques Cousteau asked me to, who knew that I was starting to cultivate, to try to cultivate corals, asked me to uh, put a coral tank in the Monaco's museum. At that time, Jacques Cousteau was the director of the, the, the museum. So I managed to, to have some goniopora, fungia, uh, Pleurogera, sinuosa, that's baby fungia, uh, giant clam. This was in 1973. They, they, I collected these corals in Israel, in Elat, with the help of the uh, Weissman Institute. But, you know, th this thing was. Uh, was working with an undergravel fil filter, which is a nitrate factory. During, uh, as long as uh, I, I didn't put fish in the aquarium, and uh, during the first uh, uh, the first period, you know, the the cores were looking like if they were doing very well. So I I thought I, I had to find the, the um, good method, and publish the first paper in a French uh, uh, journal. But uh, w w since this aquarium was uh, working with an indoor gravel filter, what had to happen finally happened. And over time, the accumulation of nutrients triggered blooms of, fi of filamentous algae that overgrew all of the coral colonies. Well. In 1978, I started to investigate reef metabolism in the Red Sea. Since I couldn't keep uh, cores in good condition in the lab, so I, deci I decided to brought the lab to the seafloor. So I used uh, watertight equipment and so on, and plastic domes to investigate the metabolism of the, uh, of the cores, of the sediment, and so on. And by chance, I uncovered that the sediment was able to take up the nitrate from the water. And this is the way I uncovered, and then I, I started to investigate the activity of microorganisms, of uh, denitrifying bacteria, and so on. This is how I understand that it, it, it was necessary to have a hypoxic or anoxic layer in the sediment of the, of the tank to remove the nitrate, which was the, the, the major problem, the reason why the, the coral was not developing well. At that time, I, 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 I had a, a large tank in my, uh, in my office, in my lab. And this is in 1980. How it was looking like you know, the core was surviving, was full of algae. Uh, it's not, not. So when I, after this experiment I did in the Red Sea, and I discovered that the um, sediment was able to uptake the nitrate and, this, and transform the nitrate into uh, molecular nitrogen, so I decided to try the same thing in, in my lab. And when I, I was in front of the tank, I, I thought if I, I have to remove uh, the, uh, all of the, the sand, the sediment, and so on. And suddenly I had the idea, what, what I, had, I can try to dis just disconnect the under gravel filter. And this is what I did. The, uh, the filtration was just uh, uh, completed with uh, one airlift, you know, so I disconnected the air leaf from the, uh, the, the, uh, the plenum, which was under the, 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 sand, uh, the, the sand layer, the core sand layer. And quickly, you know, the, uh, the nitrate disappeared, and then the core started to grow. And I see uh, six years after, this is the aquarium, same tank full of light, full of corals, hard, soft, large 
polyps, small polyps. So I published the first results in 1981. Then uh, in 1989, uh, and uh, it was during uh, uh, an international symposium uh, organized by Jack Cousteau, who mentioned this in the uh, in his address, opening address of the symposium. So this is a, a schematic uh, representation of the how the, this thing was functioning at that time. I, I since I, w I was using you know the one air lift, the air lift was producing small amount of foam that I was discarding in a, in a jar. So I had at, at, at that time a, a very slight skimming. But I, I don't think this is very important, but I mentioned it because this is what uh, happened. So at that time, something that I didn't understand is that I thought that the uh, nitrates was going to the uh, hypoxic layer of the sediment just by diffusion, which is completely wrong. And it is, a, and I understand the, the role, the very important role of the uh, steering induced poor water circulation. When I read the uh, paper of, of Pretch and Huedel in uh, published in 2003. In fact, th th this uh, water steering induced Poor water circulation plays a very important role in the uh, purification, ecological balance of this kind of aquarium. So the uh, production of uh, reactive ni nitrogen, so ammonium, uh, nitrates, nitrates, and so take place in the upper parts of the sediment layer. Which is super oxygenated during the day because of the photosynthesis. So the ammonification, nitrification, nitratation, all of these uh, processes, biochemical processes, release either protons or carbon dioxide, which hydrates to form carbonic acid. And these protons and carbon acid are neutralized because they dissolve the calcium carbonate. Of the sediment, the same processes also, also occur in the live rocks. However, the uh, most important process of car calcium carbonate, carbonate dissolution is the, the result from the activity of the organisms that are responsible for the bioerosion. And you see the this photo fr I, I took from uh, an article published uh, recent, not, not recently, but, uh, uh, well, yeah, not 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 uh, long time ago in 2011. You can see the uh, dissolution of, uh, of a piece of uh, dead coral, and the most uh, uh, number of organisms, uh, bacteria, cyanobacteria, and organisms, fungi, algae, sponges, worms, mollusks, urchin, etc., erode carbonate substrates, either sand or, or reef rock or uh, live coral skeletons, releasing chips as, as well as, as calcium and carbonate ions. And the most uh, effective organisms are boring sponges. So now the other part of the system, the reactive nitrogen removal pathway, there is one which is quite well identified. This is heterotrophic dinit dinitrification, also called nitrate respiration because the bacteria that live in the oxygen poor environment, they remove the, the oxygen from the nitrate ions 
and use it to oxidize their food, uh, organic matter. And most, maybe, but this is, remains to be demonstrated, at least in the tropical environment, the auto autotrophic process, which is called anamox, which is a direct reduction of ammonium to uh, molecular nitrogen under anoxic conditions, but it is autotrophic, doesn't require uh, organic matter like the heterotrophic denitrifying bacteria. So the heterotrophic denitrification requires organic matter, because the organic matter is the food upon which the bacteria are feeding. And this organic matter reaches the deep layer of the sediments. How? There are several possible routes. One is the uh, small particles of dissolved organic, no, no, sorry, uh, not particles, uh, dissolved organic matter. When you put food in the aquarium or uh, some organic matter is decaying and so on, a part of this matter becomes uh, soluble. And it, it reaches the, uh, the uh, lower part of the sediment layer, just transported by the pore water circulation. So I, I put no skimmer, because in, in, in this case, the skimmer, which removed the organic matter, of course, uh, can uh, in, inhibit the uh, work of the uh, heterotrophic bacteria. Also, there are microparticles that result from the fragmentation of the surface film, uh, which also can reach the uh, lower layers of the sediment transported by the pore water circulation. And then uh, the, the, the last uh, route is the feces of the sediment dwelling invertebrates I call this the endofauna connection. Uh, one of the most uh, powerful organisms is the spaghetti worm. And you can, uh, this is a, a schematical representation of, of the system. And I put a photo of the spaghetti worm in, in, the, in the sediment in the, the corner of the, of the... So I show you a, f a few uh, movies that uh, many animals feed on the surface film. Urchins, uh, sea slugs, uh, gastropods, stomatella, and fish. I hope it worked now. <laughs> I don't know why. So uh, at this point, I would, I would like to comment the paper of uh, Tunen and Wee, 2005, because they they wrote a paper uh, that was uh, the, the the objective of this paper was to compare. Uh, different uh, systems, and they, they found that uh, a layer of sediment, wh whether it is with a, a plenum or without a plenum, didn't remove nitrates from water. You know, they, they, this is the the, the schemes are, are copied from their uh, the, their paper, and uh, after 100. And 11 days, you know, they, they found concentration of nitrates uh, higher than 10 milligrams, 15 or something like that. And r the reason why they, 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 they found this is just because there was uh, such, so much steering in the small tanks, there are experimental tanks, that the, no ox oxygen pool layer could develop in, in, the, in the system. So with, without uh, oxygen pool layer, there is no denitrification. And of course, the, the uh, nitrates are building. Uh, 
So, and in my tanks, you know, I, 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 I found concentrations of nitrous below one milligram after uh, 1,000 and more days, and even several years. So this is a, a picture of one of these of these tanks. The nitrates are, are are below one milligram per liter, phosphate below 0.03. Calcium remains just without uh, calcium supplementation, and magnesium they remain in the uh, in the normal. Uh, uh, Range that one can measure in uh, reef waters, and you see I have several kinds of of corals, and this works very well even in in uh, very small tanks. You know, this is twenty twenty liter nano aquarium, and. I have a spectacular, spectacular growth rate of hard corals, either small polyps. On, on this, uh, you can see a six month growth. You, know, the, uh, you have a small cutting, uh, a nabbing of uh, Seriotopora caliandrum, and it is uh, only six months later. I oh know it's really uh, becoming much bigger. And also, I, I, I hold the same thing with Stylophora, Pistillata. Uh, this is a, a Philia divisa. You know, on, the, uh, on the right corner, you have one polyp in uh, so it was in uh, two, 2011, yes. And uh, this year in July, you know, it, it is uh, 10 or, or more polyps. Of course, the, these small tanks with not many hard cores are not supplemented. But of course, it is possible also to have a lot of, of coral. This is one tank uh, with uh, a, re a reconstruction of uh, one Acropora bush, which is this one, you know, requires supplementation. So in the, in the, in the, in the previous tanks, I don't uh, add anything but a compound that contains, and I'm testing at the time being, which I think accelerate the biogeochemical cycle and uh, make possible to increase the number of fish without uh, negative interference for the system. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>